Hello Pottery One. We are here to learn how to smooth our pinch pots. So you have two pinch pots at home right now. You are going to need to smooth them both out completely. So we're going to talk about how to do that after you've had day one of pinching. All right, here we go. If you look down here, I have my examples out, some that I've made, and I'm going to go through just starting how to clean those up. So on day one, our overall goal was to make sure that our pot was pinched out into the shape that we wanted it to be. We wanted to make sure it was thin on the inside here. So the interior, I could take my thumb and my forefinger and put it in my clay and it comes out, it comes out the thickness of a number two pencil. So you have a number two pencil in your kit. Like I said, I'm going to use the same kit that you guys have at home um, to measure my or to make all my stuff. So here's my number two pencil. I can put it in between my thumb and forefinger, find the thickness on there, and then I can put my fingers on here to see if it's the same. I want it to be the same from the lip through the body, and then this edge right here is where we tend to hold the most clay, and then the base too, we want to make sure those are nice and thin for us. Before I wrapped my pot up the first time, I made sure that I smoothed out the inside the best that I could so that I wouldn't have to go back in and do too much there. So there's a little bit of cleanup just from fingerprints, but the majority of the work that I'm going to do is on the outside of my pot. So on the outside of my pot here, what we can see is we have some cracks that we need to fill in and cover up. And I wanna do that by, if I need to, I can use a little bit of water. So I have, I've got my braid set up right here. My cord's gonna come into view for a second. So I've got my water here. And remember, when I'm adding water to my pot, now I probably don't need to add it to mine because it is really quite plastic still. It's not 100% leather hard yet. But if you're using your water at home, just a little bit of water, so you can just have a little bowl next to you, or you can put a little squirt on the table. And then I can use that little tiny amount of water right there, as you can barely see on my finger, and I can put it onto my clay and start to smooth that in. So you see how shiny that it gets there. We don't want it to stay shiny, and I don't want to add more water to it unnecessarily. I could end up with this muddy, slippy mess instead of a pot that I can really work with. So really decide, do you need that water or not? If you don't need it, don't use it. I'm going to see here how smooth it is in comparison to what I have here with the cracks on the side. So right here, I'm not going to use any water, and you can see just by using my thumb, I'm smoothing those cracks in and I'm getting a nice smooth pot as well. If you notice the inside of my, the hand, my hand the in, is staying on the inside as well with my thumb on the outside, that way I'm bracing my pot, giving it some support. I'm not leaving it on the table either. I'm kind of holding it in my hand so I can twist it around. So our priority number one is to get those cracks taken care of. After that, we're going to be working on the hills and valleys. I'm going to grab a little water on here. Smooth that in. After that, I'm going to start to work on the hills and valleys of my piece. So the hills and valleys were created by my feet when I started to pinch it up. We don't want it to look as it was pinched by our hand. We don't want anybody to see exactly where our fingers were. This is part of what we call our craftsmanship. So attention to detail and making sure that we're building appropriately on every single area. We want it to look nice whether you can see it or not. Um, hopefully the videos get better as we go. 
It's just not something that I typically do in class. We usually, usually are doing all these in real time. So first one, I got smoothed out with my uh, finger, just getting rid of the cracks. Next thing I'm going to do is my hills and valleys. So with my hills and valleys, what I want is my white card. With my white car, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to press it against my clay. So go ahead and grab your white card out so that you have it right next to you. So for my car, it's a flexible car. My hand's going to stay on the inside here. What I don't want to have happen is I don't want the card to be straight up and down because I don't want to scrape along my pot and pick clay up on the car. If you get clay on the car, knock it off so it doesn't end up adding some little divots to your piece. So I'm gonna use it flat on my clay and I'm gonna press the clay down. So I'm keeping my hands on the inside because if they're not on the inside, it's going to cave in on me. If I look at that, it's getting the shine to it right here. It's evening out that surface and it's compressing our clay together a little bit more. So it's going to become just a tad bit stronger even as I'm doing this. So my hands on the inside and pressing all together. Try to keep the shape that you made if you decided to go round or if you decided to add in a little bit of a more geometric or organic shape to it. That was totally a artist choice right there. No wrong way to do it. Um, I'm asking you to not do a heart though. Keep that in mind. Elevating our idea of our designs, and we're thinking from a unique, creative perspective. Okay. Whole piece is smooth there. I look at that guy. This is one that I would not consider done yet. I would want to go over it a couple more times as my clay gets just a little bit drier. I have two pots here. Well, I have, I actually have five pots here. This one, if you have something that's more organic on here, so my shape's a little bit different, I just have to be really careful in where I'm pressing and what I'm doing because there will be just more divots to take care of. So just take your time, smooth it out with your thumb, get in there with the car the best that you can. Now that I'm working on smoothing them, that means the bottom is going to stay pretty much the way it's supposed to. Number one thing I'm asking you to do, even when you're at home, is to make sure your name gets on the bottom. Because remember, we're gonna have over 140 pinch pops just from my classes alone. I wanna get your things back to you. So on the bottom of your pot, you can take your pen or pencil. This would be the one time we use these as a writing tool. And you can press your initials or your name into the bottom. Trying to keep your utensil on the side. So if you're watching me do it here, my pencil laying on its side, not straight up and down. Because if I'm straight up and down, I'm digging that clay out and making some clay boogers on there. If I press it on its side, it's pushing the clay down in. So make sure your initials get onto the bottom of your piece to get it back to you. 
I'm going to make sure that that's happening on here as well. Giving myself kind of a little bit more of an identifier, a line, put a line underneath mine. You can make your own little symbol there as well. If we were in the classroom, we have alphabet pasta that we typically put in the bottom of our pots, and that will fire out and leave your initials on the, on the bottom here as well. All right, I'm going to pause this right here so that I can finish smoothing these out. And then we're going to talk texture. How do we decorate our pots? So you're going to decide between these two pots that you have, which pot do you want to keep smooth and which pot do you want to make a texture on? So we're going to learn how to score and slip, add texture, and add a foot here in our next video.